Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. Today I have this beautiful sunlit parrot that we are going to paint and I'm starting off with the background, wet on wet. We're gonna make some lovely bokeh effects and it's just a very cheery, lemony yellow, beautiful greens in the background. So I'm wetting the background very well with this hacky brush. And then we're dropping in our colors. My lightest color, a cadmium yellow. And of course my favorite leaf green is very cheerful and bright. Always working from light to dark. So putting in my yellows first and then this coming in with some sap green. Now I am forming my brush strokes in a circular fashion to mimic the bokeh lights that we'll be putting in with some sponges. Um, we're going to do this while the paper is still wet. While the paper is still wet, I'm using my sponge daubers to lift paint. Now I am just sort of doing this randomly, loosely following the reference photo. And you wanna watch your sponge dots that you're making. Parts of the paper that might be still too wet will start to dry with hard edges like you can see on the top. So I am going over those areas multiple times while your paper is drying to make those lights softer. And you can see how pretty this effect is. Just looks so very bright and he's backlit. And notice you do want to leave some white of the paper on the right hand side when I first started putting on the paint because that's where the light source is coming from. Once my paper dries, we're going to work on doing the bird. I'm starting with the lightest color, which is the yellow of his belly, and I'm wetting the paper first. So I am going to drop in my first layer, wet on wet. Using my lightest cadmium yellow, I'm also mixing my cadmium yellow with ISO Yellow Deep. And I'm always painting in the direction the feathers are going. I'm leaving some white of the paper so I know where my clusters of feathers are. Keep in mind this is the first layer so he isn't going to look very pretty. This is the ugly stage of watercolor as they call it. Your first layer has very little definition and it's just basically an underpainting. So you have to think beyond that. Painting in the direction the feathers are going, I'm adding in some of my darker yellows, which is the Quin Gold and the Iso Yellow Deep. So I'm establishing these groups of feathers and the direction that they're going in. Moving on to his head, I am gonna lay down the greens and blues that are around his little face and down his back. So working in the same manner, wetting first, my lightest color on his head that I see is a little clump of yellow. And then it's sort of green close to his eye.
and then we are going to transition into the blue. I used a peacock blue and this is my first layer so I'm just lying it down loosely painting in the direction that the feathers are going. While it's still wet, a thing that I like to do is use a script liner brush and drag out some of that paint into the yellow. It kind of helps blend it together and then you have them sort of meeting in a more cohesive way. I have some cobalt and ultramarine in my palette, colder blues that I'm putting in for the shadows underneath these feathers. While it's still wet, it's blending in and gives it a softer effect. Now the really pretty feathers here on the side have lots of color going on. So that is why I chose uh, warm and cold blue colors. I'm going to start off with the peacock blue, um, which is the light warm blue, and lay down that foundation. And then I'm coming in with the colder blues that I have in my palette, the cobalts and the ultramarines and I am hitting the tips and just kind of following the outline that I drew myself of where these groups of feathers are gonna go. Everything is wet and it is spreading and it has a very soft effect. Little bit of purple for the darkest ones that are on his back. Coming in with some stronger color, he's got very vibrant feathers. And while it's still wet, I'm just trying to go over and add in those colors. Now my paper is starting to dry. I don't like the way I'm getting some hard edges. And when that happens, all you have to do is re-wet your paper and let all those colors bleed together they might create little blooms here and there, but um, it's feathers and there's going to be all sorts of texture there. So here I go, kind of wetting everything so that it all blends together nicely. Now his head is dry. I'm going to go back in and add some more color, increasing the saturation as well as the value. Working on the yellow again, putting on a glaze so that he's a little more yellow there. So this is a cadmium yellow and I really want his belly to be bright just like in the reference photo. So I'm putting a glaze of that all over. And then while it's still wet, I can mix my darker yellows and go over those feather strokes and those groups of feathers that I already established in the first layer. Going back to adding more color on the top of his head with those yellows and greens. And it's quite dark around his eye, so I'm really going in and adding that darker color that I need to. Now the fleshy tones on his face are almost like a, a very pale purpley pink color. So I'm just basically using some very dirty water <laughs> and putting in that face color. While that dries, 
I just keep adding more feathers where I need to, putting in the shadows of the feathers, and just adding in more detail. So the big clumps of the blue feathers, we are going to paint in a negative painting way. So negative painting is when you establish an object by painting around it. And notice that I drew in the feathers and then I am softening that by just using pure water. Okay, so see how that pops right up? And then you wanna soften the edges with water so that you could then get your next tier of feathers. So there I go, there's my next tier. And then I take water and I soften it. Take water, soften that out and it just pops right forward and there you that is negative painting. So there you go. It's cool, it's fun, and it just works really good to paint these big groups of feathers in this way. So draw in your feather, take some water and soften it out. This was my favorite part to paint by far. Draw the feather. You could do a few at a time. Take your water and soften that out. Hey guys, if you're getting value out of this video, please think about subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate it and smash that like button. So basically we're working from the top down and just repeating this process. You could do this negative painting works really good for florals too. I'm in the middle of trying to practice doing roses and petals and painting in a, a negative manner like this, and it's a lot of fun. So now that the feathers are done, I saved the best for last, and that's getting the eyes and the, the mouth, the face of the animal. That's the most important part uh, to make it plausible. This is where we are gonna put the most detail. So I'm doing the underpainting of his beak, and I'm using Perusian Blue for that. So we're gonna let that dry. So now that we've come back and the face is dry as well, I am using some neutral tint mixed with indigo and it's a very extremely watery mixture. I'm putting in all those textures and wrinkled areas on his face that I see in the reference photo. Always painting from light to dark. So this would be the lightest part of his face. And once that is drawn in, I can go on to 
doing his eye, his nose area, and all those really pretty, very dark feathers that are on his face. Always painting these feathers in the direction that they grow. So make sure you watch your reference photo while you're painting his face and just really pay attention to the way those feathers go. So I'm coming in with my Indigo and I'm darkening up that beak. So I'm putting in all those colors and getting it as dark as it needs to be. and getting in those very dark indigo colors that are under his chin. I'm using my number eight black silver brush. Notice the tip is very fine and it allows me to get some very fine details in. I have a very watery mixture. I'm putting in the shadow that is underneath his tufts of hair on his face. So I'm adding the shadows of the yellow. I felt like that needed another coat So using the Quinacridin Gold and my ISO Yellow Deep. Always painting in the direction the feathers go. Where the yellow feathers transition to the blue, I'm increasing the shadows around those areas so that they uh, blend better in value. Adding a touch of color to his eye, he's got a bit of a yellow tinge to it. Now with a very watery mixture of my PH Martin white watercolor, I'm using that to draw in the lines and dry brushing effects that I see on his beak. This is adding detail. Adding in more shadow on those feathers around his face, increasing the contrast. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you give it a try and let me know what you think about negative painting in the comments below. See you next week.